Risk of Rain 2 is one of those games I can always go back to. The base game by itself is content rich as is, but with the addition of the DLCs and some additional mods that you can take with you on the go, there's more you can do. Let's get to it. But if you like this video or any other video of me, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. And in the meantime, why don't you check out Off the Console? It's a brand new podcast created by me, Gardner Bryan, and Games Revealed, with guest stars occasionally. And while yes, it's on YouTube, it's also available wherever podcasts can be found, like Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Check it out. Risk of Rain 2 does have an Epic Games Store version. And yes, R2 Mon Man does work with the Epic Games version of Risk of Rain 2. But of course, given that this is a Steam Deck tutorial and, you know, it just makes things a lot easier in game mode, you should be playing the Steam version of Risk of Rain 2. Now, the first step is to install Risk of Rain 2 on your Steam Deck. You can choose to install it onto your SSD or micro SD card, but there is a little workaround you have to do to get this to work on the micro SD card. As for the next step, you should be in desktop mode. Yes, like all good Steam Deck tutorials, desktop mode is mandatory. From there, you'll need to download two things. First and foremost is, of course, the App Image Launcher. Now, some Linux heads may be telling you that app images by design are meant to be downloaded and just run, and you don't really need a launcher per se. But to run R2 Mod Men in game mode, this is necessary. So you'll want to download it from their official GitHub page, and you'll want to grab this file right here. Once downloaded, you'll want to move this to the home folder. And after moving it to the home folder, you'll want to make it executable. Just right-click the app image, press properties, go to permissions, and then press is executable. And once that's done, yes, you will need to go into terminal to do this one step, but this is the only time you'll need the command prompt. Right-click an empty space around your folder, and then press open terminal here. Once you've done that, type this in as it shows up in this video. For those who want to know, this is the exact name of the file that downloads as it is. So rather than trying to type this in manually, instead it might be better to copy and paste the name of the app image. And you've done the hardest step of this entire video. And if you're on a fresh install of SteamOS like I am, you'll see a new folder called Applications on the Home folder. Once you're done with that, you'll need to download R2 Modman, which is the mod manager we want to use for Risk of Rain 2, and a couple of other games too. Download the app image, and then put that in the Applications folder that was just made. And for the final step, to get this working in game mode, you will need to add it to Steam. Now typically, you can just right click the app image and then press Add to Steam and you should be good. But in this case, you will need one extra launch argument. Now, typically adding this through Steam's built-in add a non-Steam game function does add this launch option to it. But just in case it doesn't, you'll want to add quotation mark dash dash no dash sandbox quotation mark. That way, R2 Mod Man will actually work as expected in game mode. And there we go. R2 Mod Man is ready to be used in game mode. But fair warning, R2 Mod Man is not controller friendly. It requires a mouse to navigate and basically do things in that launcher. Not a huge deal for the Steam Deck given that the Steam Deck has trackpads, but if say your deck was docked or perhaps you're doing like a Bazite home theater PC setup, then you'll want to set up some custom controls to navigate the R2 Modman menu with a controller. In my case, since I'm using an 8-bit dough controller, I have a pretty simple setup. Left stick as the mouse and the sensitivity pretty low and also A as left click and B as right click. When you open up R2 Modman for the first time, you'll see a bunch of games. Many of these may be games you don't necessarily own, but these are all the games that R2 Modman directly supports. In this case, since it's a Risk of Rain 2 tutorial, you are going to select Risk of Rain 2. You might even press that star icon in the top right corner of the Risk of Rain 2 icon so that it's favorited and it shows up at the top of the list every single time. So once you select Risk of Rain 2, it'll give you the option to make multiple profiles, but you start with one default profile. Multiple profiles can be useful in case you want to run different sets of mods at different times. You know, different mod packs if you will. Let's just go ahead and press the default option. And of course, finally. Finally, we're at the menu where you can start actually installing mods. Now you'll notice that a lot of the top downloaded mods are like framework mods. They're not necessarily mods in and of themselves, but they enable mods to do things extra within the game. Things like Beep and EX or whatever. Many mods require those, but the cool thing about R2 Mod Man is it detects what mods needs what dependencies. So if you were to go to say Starstorm 2, one of the best Risk of Rain 2 mods available, 
then you'll notice that Starstorm 2 actually needs 32 different dependencies. Now the cool thing about R2 Modman is that instead of making you download each of those dependencies one at a time, if you start downloading Starstorm 2, it'll download those other 32 dependencies that the mod needs to function. And of course, mods will also share dependencies as well. So if you download two different mods that depend on the same sort of like framework, then it won't download dependencies multiple times as well, which is important in case you have limited data. So the actual final step is to just start loading up on a bunch of different mods. There are a wide variety of different mods. Mods that seem like they could fit the lore of Risk of Rain 2, or mods like adding Goku and Vegeta, and a bunch of other stuff like that. It is highly recommended that you set up a new in-game profile for your unlocks, that way you separate your vanilla profile with your modded profile. Now, if you installed Risk of Rain 2 onto your SSD, then you're actually done. But if you download it onto a microSD card like I did, then you'll find out that there's one more step you need to do. And it's a fairly simple one, actually. Now, by default, if you try to run the game when you install it onto your micro SD card, it'll say there's an error. Your compatibility data doesn't exist. But the real kicker is the compat data never goes on the micro SD card, for a number of different reasons, including performance. But how do we remedy this without having to move it entirely to your micro SD card? This is where sim links come into play. What you'll need to do, of course, is pull up your micro SD card folder. You should find under primary, and then go into the Steam Apps folder of your micro SD card and look for the Compat Data folder. You typically shouldn't have a compatibility data folder in there, but in this case I had one from before. Now what you want to do is find the Risk of Rain 2 compatibility folder. You can do this by going to this hamburger menu in the top right corner, going to Show Hidden Files, and then going into Steam, and then go into the Steam folder, and then the Steam Apps folder and then Compat Data folder, and then you'll want to go by Risk of Rain 2's app ID. In this case, it's 632360, and then you'll want to drag that over to your SD card's Compat Data folder, and then you'll see a couple of different options. Press link here, and you'll have successfully made a sim link. Now R2 Modman thinks the compatibility data is on your micro SD card, which means it's good to go. Your compatibility data still exists on your SSD, as it should. But now R2 Modman thinks the compatibility data is on the SD card, so it doesn't throw up that error anymore. I wish they would fix that, but they just haven't for some reason. And there you have it, Risk of Rain 2, but modded on Steam Deck. Now, as for the other games supported by R2 Modman, I mean, I would imagine they'd work, but I have no idea. Some games like Bellatro don't work super well with R2 Modman, despite, you know, being supported. But that's a different story. R2 Modman also comes with some neat features too, like the ability to export your mod list as a file or as a code that you can just give to your friends to download all of your mods and play multiplayer with. Yeah, that's right. Some of these mods are multiplayer compatible, and by some I think most of them are as long as you all have the same mods. And yes, this is the current best way to mod Risk of Rain 2 on your Steam Deck. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high tech lowlife with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.